Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official study manuals for T 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve some problems. There is a continuation. There is a continuation of the problems that you see on page number 132. We yesterday we finished the five problems that you see on page 132. And towards the end of the video, on day number three, I gave you some homework. Five problems to do, do on your own. If you have not done them already, and if you're watching this video without having done them, I'm gonna get out of your way in s I'm gonna get out of your way in a second. Pause the video, solve the problem first. You will find that you will get a lot more out of it, lot lot more out of them rather, if you do them yourself first. Even if you strict, even if you happen to struggle a little bit, because that's how we learn. Here are the five problems from yesterday. Number one was convert three three over two hundred and fifty into decimal. Number two was convert one hundred and fifty into decimal. Number three was convert point zero two five into fraction. Number four was convert six twenty fifth into percentage and decimal. And number five finally was convert seven tenth to percent. Pause the video if you have not done them already. I'll give you a second to do just that. Well, let's get going. Number one. It says convert three over two hundred and fifty into decimal. As we already talked about it in the first three days, day number one, two, and three as to how to go about converting any number into decimal it always makes it easier if you're given something in a fraction if you're given a fraction if you're given a fraction asked to convert that into a decimal it always makes it much easier to figure out some way of converting the bottom part into some multiple of 100 either a 10 or a 100 or a 1000 or 10,000 or 100,000 some multiple of 100 because Dividing by 10 or 100 or 1000 is very easy. All we have to do is move the decimal. Here on the bottom we have 250. Obviously we are way past 10 or 100. Let's try 1000. How can we convert this into 1000? We have 3 over 250. How can we convert that into 1000? It's very easy. Multiply top and bottom by 4. Because 250 times 4 is 1000. Just remember that whatever you multiply the bottom by, we must do the same thing to the top. So on the top, we had 3 before, now we end up with 3 times 4, we end up with 12. There we go. Now, converting 12 into decimal is very easy. Here is our 12. Here is our 12. Where is the decimal point? I don't see any decimal point. How are we going to move the decimal if we cannot look at the bloody thing? Oh, it's right here. It's right here. Right here is the decimal. It's not written, but it's there. We're going to pick it up and we're going to move it to the left. How many places? One, two, three. Three places because there are three zeros there. One, two, three. It's going to end up right here. It's going to end up right here and we put a zero right there. And that's all it is. So the answer is three over three over two hundred and fifty. Final answer is equals to zero point zero one two. You have to put a leading zero here. That's just a convention, that's just a tradition. We put a leading zero to make, make this more noticeable, to make it more conspicuous. Otherwise, you might miss decimal. 0 0.012. Let's do the next one. Number two. Problem number two was convert one fifth, one fifth into decimal. Into decimal. Let's do this, shall we? Again, since we're being asked to convert into decimal, let's convert the bottom into a 10, makes it much easier. One fifth, how do we convert that into a 10? Well, what can we multiply 5 by to make it a 10? Well, the answer is 2. Multiply top and bottom by 2, we end up with 2 over 10, and 2 over 10 is simply 0 0.2. That's very good. Test to number 3. Number 3 says, Convert, convert 0 0.025 into fraction. And this is going to require some work. 
this is going to require some work, so stay with me, pay attention. We have to convert this into fraction. Why? Well, it's already a fraction. Did you know that? That's already a fraction. It's 0 0.025 over 1. You can write that, so obviously. 0 0.025 over 1, it is a fraction. But it's a damn silly one. Uh, that won't do it. If you want to write two quantities in a fraction form, both of the quantities must be in the form of a whole number, in the form of an integer. How can you convert the top into a whole number? Well, there are three places after a decimal. One, two, three. If you multiply the top by 1000, it will become a whole number. We'll see that in a second. If we're going to multiply top by 1000, we must do the same thing to the bottom. And now let's take a look at it. We have 0 0.025 if you multiply by 1000, we have to move this decimal place to the right. How many places? 1, 2, 3, 3 places. 1, 2, 3, oh, what do you know? It becomes a whole number. 0 .0 0 0.025 when multiplied by 1000 becomes a 25. So what we end up here is 25 on the top and 1000 at the bottom. This is taking a lot of room. I'm going to raise this thing. You don't need it. But I am going to leave these two just to remind you that if you are interested in getting some any extra help, uh, you can always watch the original series, which is based on T5, fifth edition of T's, which came out in 2012. I know it's many, many years ago, but I assured you they have not changed the math in eight years. Math does not go with fashion, it does not go out of fashion. Watch the original series on my channel, there are 80 videos and you will learn a lot more. And that's just another series of basic math if you need help in basic math. Anyway, back to our work. Well, again, we cannot leave it like that. It depends on the answer choices. If the answer choices, one of the answer choices says that 25 over 1000, you're done. But if it turns out that sometimes the answer choices are written in the reduced form, then we must continue with this thing and reduce it even more. If, we, if it can be reduced, if you can find any common factor between top and bottom, then we have to reduce it. What we have here is, let's erase this part, we don't need it. What we have here is 25 over a thousand. Let's write our thousand as 100 times 10. 100 times 10 is still a thousand and now we can reduce it. How many 25 does a hundred have? Do you know how many 25, 100 is how, made up of how many 25s? Obviously 100 is made up of 425 which is probably why we have four quarters in a dollar and not five or a three. Four quarters is a dollar. Twenty-five times four is a hundred. Everybody knows that. Let's divide top by, let's divide top and bottom by twenty-five. Let's divide top and bottom by twenty-five because that's the common factor. Twenty-five divided by twenty-five is one. Twenty-five, hundred divided by twenty-five is four. And four times ten is forty. So we end up with one over forty. Voila. So, this quantity, this quantity, 0 0.25 when written in a fraction form boils down to 1 over 40. Voila. Or if you like 25 over 1000 if you if you didn't reduce it. Let's do number 4. Let's see number 4. Or oh, number 4 should be alright. Number 4 says 6 over 25. Convert this into percent and decimal. Let's do that, shall we? So what does the word percent mean? Percent means percent means per 100. If we can convert the bottom into 100, we talked about it many many times, we have talked about it many many times now. If we can convert the bottom of a fraction into a 100, exactly 100, then whatever we see on the top, whatever that appears on the top, that's your percentage. Because percentage means out of 100. It's already out of 100, which means whatever is on the top, that's the percentage. How can we convert the bottom into a 100? We have 6 over 25. How can we convert the bottom into a 100? Answer is very easy. Multiply, multiply the bloody thing by 4. Now if you're going to multiply the bottom by 4, we must do the same thing to the top. Now we have 6 times 4 which is 24 over 100, 24 over 100, if you want it in decimal form, the decimal is right now is sitting over here, the decimal is right now sitting over here, 
and since we're dividing it by 100, we must move the decimal two places to the right or to the left, right here. It ends up right here. So in other words, in other words, 24 over 100 is same as 0 0.25, 0, 0 0.25. But if you wanted to express, if you wanted to express 6 over 25 into percentage, it's very easy. We'll do the same process. 6 over 25, we multiply top and bottom by 4, we end up at 24 over 100. Now that we have 100 at the bottom, which means the top, whatever we see, whatever we see in the top, that's the percentage, 24%. In other words, 24% is same as 0 0.25, which is same as 6 over 25, which is same as 24 over 100. They are all same quantities. All of these are same quantities. There's no difference. It's like writing, it's like writing 0.25 is equal to one quarter, is equal to, uh, is equal to uh, 100 over 400. They're all the same thing. They're all equal to each other. Same thing here. Do you understand? So we had a fraction, we had a decimal. Oh, why don't we put that percentage here instead of writing 100 over 100? That would be silly. There we go. It's the same exact thing. 0.25 is 25%, which is same as one quarter. Same exact idea here. That was number four. Number five. Number five says convert seven tenth into percentage. Oh, it's very easy. Percent means percent means out of 100. We have to convert the bottom into 100. Well, how do we do that? We have 7 tenth. How do we convert the bottom into 100? We multiply it by 10. We can multiply the bottom by 10. We must multiply the top by 10. It ends up with 70 over 100. Now we have 100 at the bottom. Now that we have 100 at the bottom, whatever we see on the top, that's the percentage. In other words, 7 over 7 over 10 when converted into percentage is exactly 70 percent and that's all it is ex exactly equal to 70 percent that was number five and that is what i gave you for homework and here's what we're going to do next here's number six it says convert 35 percent convert 35 percent into fraction and always remember, if the fraction can be reduced, it must be reduced. Here's number seven. It says convert 319% into fraction and decimal. Number eight says convert 0 0.681 into percent and fraction. When we do this also decimal. Number nine says convert 0 0.035 into fraction. And finally number ten says convert 71 over 250 into decimal. These are your homework problem for day number five. These are not in the book, they are bonus problem. Day number five. And at that point, at that point, after after tomorrow's video, day number five, we'll be done with the first topic, the first chapter which dealt with the concept of decimal, fraction, and percentage. It's a very important topic, and therefore, we must master it thoroughly. And that was that will be the end of chapter number 20. It says convert fractions, decimals, and percentages. Chapter 20 that you see on page number 129. And then after tomorrow, we'll go on to a new topic. Chapter number 21, which is talking about performing arithmetic operations, which has to do with what is known as PAMDAS, order operations. But they'll be after, they'll be day after tomorrow, not tomorrow, tomorrow. I want you to do these five problems ahead of time. Make sure you do them ahead of time. 
and then we'll work them together. If you wish to get hold of me, you can send me a simple email at keshwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright, bye now.